we're here to run through the features of the red hydrogen. How's the battery life? Camera quality. How is the modularity for view content? How's the overall call quality on this? Last but not least, we'll take a look at the build. And then finally, we'll wrap up. What do I think about it now using it for a month? Most importantly, is it going to continue to be my daily driver or am I going to switch? First and foremost, I gotta start with the battery life. I've been blown away by the battery life on this phone. I've found that I'm ending the day sometimes at 75% battery life, and by no means am I barely using the phone. I'm constantly checking emails, messaging, browsing the web, watching YouTube. I'm really finding the battery life is the most important thing on this phone that really stands out to me. I've never owned a phone that's gotten quite this level of battery life going two days sometimes without charging the phone. Let's talk about the camera that comes on the red hydrogen because it's a red, you expect that to be outstanding. So I was really impressed after the most recent update came out. Some of the images here, we'll take a look at comparison to the Note 8. So I wanna do an example where we can see a lot of detail in a picture. So you can see zoomed in as we take different ranges, how well that detail holds up. I wanted to take some example shots where we could see the compression algorithms at use because even though megapixels does play a factor into overall detail, really how that's compressed is gonna play a big factor as well. We can see here when stacked up against the Note 8 that the compression algorithms on the red are improved and we're getting a lot more detail at the ranges we compare it to. So what's next to compare is really HDR. What this means is in an example where you have something in the shadows or low light and you have something very bright, how much detail can you carry throughout that entire picture? What both the Note 8 and the Red Hydrogen were doing, focusing on one of the two aspects, either we got a lot of detail outside or we got a lot of detail inside and the highlights were really blown out. The noticeable things are the level of noise that we're getting out of it and again, the detail. You can read the controls for each knob on the red hydrogen, whereas on the Note 8, you really can't read any of this detail. It's getting lost, it's getting compressed. So this is really where the red's starting to shine. As these updates have come out over time, the camera is drastically improving. One of the little pro things that they actually added in and really snuck into this camera is a focus hold button. So on the top of the phone here, you've got your shutter button, if you press that in just about halfway, originally I thought it was just a loose button, this is actually a focus hold. So you can see that we can focus on something and if we want to now move the camera around a little bit to get different framing, we can make sure that portion of the shot's still in focus. Last but not least, I wanna stress the importance of the updates I've seen for this camera. It's drastically improved through the software only updates that it's received, but I do have some other hiccups with the phone which may make it not be my daily driver moving forward. So let's dive into those other features of the phone that really make it important. All right, so now on to modularity of the phone. The pins on the back serve for this purpose and we're done. There's nothing, um, there's no modules yet. So we can't actually talk about this feature too much. We know there's things planned, but we don't have ETA pricing availability yet. So as far as modularity, you can't even account for it at this point. What do I think of four view and the holographic content on here? I did a game as well as a full movie. I tried to watch a movie in 3D on a plane. I found it pretty usable. For the game, it was a really fun and unique experience. I played a sniper game. You could zoom in. Things really did pop off the screen and you could tell it was designed and optimized for four view. I don't think it necessarily changes the way you interact with the game, but it was something that I felt added entertainment value to it. As far as the movies, watching it on a plane, I was able to do so. You may get slightly nauseous, but for me, it wasn't that bad. I was able to watch a good 15, 20 minutes of it. Again, though, it definitely added something, but when you're on a plane, I ended up wanting to use my iPad anyway because it's a larger screen. So it came down to, do I wanna watch something 3D on my small phone screen or do I wanna watch something larger on an iPad? And ultimately the iPad did win out in that aspect. It does seem like it's kind of a gimmick. Right now, it's not necessarily something that I expect myself to use nearly every day, even weekly at this point. I do like the way it lets you capture moments. That changes how I thought about certain aspects. Usually what I'll do is I'll snap a few 2D photos, then I'll do some of the four view content. And it does, when I look back on moments, kind of add that extra aspect because you're getting the 3D. So at the end of the day, this is a phone. So I wanna talk about how well it actually works. 
Overall, I found call quality was good. I did have that issue I mentioned in my last video, if you saw it, where the HD voice didn't quite work. So I found myself just leaving that off and not turning it back on. Using the headset itself, it worked pretty well. I had no issues with anyone hearing me or me hearing those on the other end. I did find with Bluetooth headsets, the range was pretty good. It was about the same as my Note 8. Last but not least, the speakerphone. The speakerphone is unusable, and I mean completely unusable. I've tried with multiple people, landlines, cell phones. No one can ever hear me or make out my voice when I'm using the speakerphone. They come through fine, the speakers work, I can hear them. I've never been able to have anyone actually understand what I'm saying. I assume through software they can fix this, but please Red, fix the speakerphone. In terms of fit and finish and build, this thing's a tank. It's gonna be heavy, but it's built with purpose and it feels good in the hand. It is a big phone, so you're gonna have to get used to that. On the back, you've got nice finishes, so it's easy to grip, easy to hold on to. I dropped this once and I thought it was gonna break a tile in my bathroom when I dropped it. It didn't even show a single dent. I don't actually know where it fell on the phone. It's not waterproof. It's not IP rated necessarily. So you're not gonna wanna take it into the water, but it does show that it's built well in general. You know it's gonna hold up. I don't see this falling apart. If you drop it, it's gonna be okay. The fingerprint reader on the side is a great implementation. It's quick, it's convenient. I do like how they did that. Along with mentioning the speakerphone not working, the speakers themselves are not that great. Red really promoted these. However, I don't think they're any better than other phones I've heard out there, and they actually may be worse than a few I've heard, especially the newer ones on the market now. The headphone jack is great. I found the audio quality coming out of that sounded great. So overall thoughts on the Red Hydrogen. I think it's been a great experience. The downsides, it's a little large. The speakerphone being unusable, not having modules for it yet. Those are pretty big. They weigh in over time. It's something you're carrying with you every day. On the pro side of it, I gotta say the battery life is the biggest standout to me, followed by the camera. So it's kind of this teeter-totter act of whether I wanna upgrade or not, because I know there's things I'm giving up, but I also know that there may be better things out there. So it's enough that I'm intrigued to want to go try other phones, but at the end of the day, I could use this every day and be happy with it. Honestly, at this time, I think if I find a good enough deal on the XS Max or the Note 9, I may find myself jumping off the red hydrogen and switching to those. Why I'm really happy I got this phone, if you think of it like a Kickstarter, you're supporting a great company. Red's done great things for the video industry, which I'm a big fan of. I'm happy to have supported this project in hopes that the next generation can be that much better. I think they'll learn a lot from this. It's the first phone they've come out with. And let's be honest, how many first product launches from a company in a new segment have done that well to begin with? I think they've really done a great job to the point where I think next gen version will be a knock out of the park and I'll be gladly switching to that in the future. So that's it guys. That's my overall thoughts of the Red Hydrogen after using it for a month and a half. As usual, go ahead and smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. Ask any questions in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. See you next time.